Well, I was very surprised to come into the ALS space, and it happened in 2006 when my mother was diagnosed with ALS. I knew very little about the disease, and at that time I was in my own business. I was doing private equity, real estate investment management, didn't know anything about this disease, became one of her primary caregivers, and learned a lot over the three years that she was with us living with ALS. Shortly thereafter, I had colleagues who were involved in the ALS space and they asked me to get involved and I joined the board of directors of one of the ALS organizations. And shortly after that, I realized that my passion really was with the nonprofit work. So I served as CEO of the Les Turner ALS Foundation, was on the board of directors at various times of the International Alliance of ALS M&D Associations and the ALS Association. Well, I want to preface by saying CPATH is very recently in the ALS space and where I think the value of CPATH is, is currently and will continue to be as we move forward with the ALS initiative is in pulling together a very disparate community. It is a very fractured group. Uh, I did a study recently and I think there were at least 80 nonprofits in the ALS space and that's only in the United States. It gets bigger obviously as we look internationally. So there's been a lot of work done in ALS, but it has not been as well coordinated as it needs to be, which is a terrible disservice to the community because there is a phenomenal unmet need in ALS. We have very few therapeutics in ALS, and those that we have marginally stop disease progression, slow disease progression, or extend survival. All of this is very marginal. We're operating really at, on, the, on the edges of this disease. But I do believe we're on the cusp to make a huge difference in drug development, and that is where CPATH can do tremendous and is doing tremendous work.